Ethiopia was introduced to the Christian faith by the Ethiopian eunuch who was baptized by the Apostle Philip. Many traditions claim that Christian teachings were introduced to the region immediately after Pentecost. John Chrysostom speaks of the Ethiopians present in Jerusalem as being able to understand the preaching of Peter in Acts 2.38. Possible missions of some of the apostles in the lands now called Ethiopia is also reported as early as the 4th century. Socrates of Constantinople includes Ethiopia in his list as one of the regions preached by Matthew the Apostle. Where a specific mention of Ethiopia south of the Caspian Sea can be confirmed in some traditions such as the Roman Catholic Church among others. Ethiopian Church tradition tells that Bartholomew accompanied Matthew in a mission which lasted for at least three months. Paintings depicting these missions can be seen in the Church of St. Matthew found in the province of Pisa, in northern Italy portrayed by Francesco Trevisan, 1650-1740, and Marco Benifiel, 1688-1764. The earliest account of an Ethiopian converted to the faith in the New Testament books is a royal official baptized by Philip the Evangelist, distinct from Philip the Apostle. One of the seven deacons, Acts 8 26 27, the angel of the Lord said to Philip, Start out and go south to the road that leads down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he set out and was on his way when he caught sight of an Ethiopian. This man was a eunuch, a high official of the Candake, Candace, queen of Ethiopia in charge of all her treasure. Acts 8 26 27, the passage continues by describing how Philip helped the Ethiopian treasurer understand a passage from the book of Isaiah that the Ethiopian was reading. After Philip interpreted the passage as prophecy referring to Jesus Christ, the Ethiopian requested that Philip baptize him, and Philip did so. The Ethiopic version of this verse reads, Hendik. Queen Gersamot Hendik 7 was the queen of Ethiopia from c. 42-52. Where the possibility of gospel missions by the Ethiopian eunuch cannot be directly inferred from the books of the New Testament, Irenaeus of Lyons around 180 AD writes that Simon Bacos preached the good news in his homeland outlining also the theme of his preaching as being the coming in flesh of God that was preached to you all before. The same kind of witness is shared by 3rd and 4th century writers such as Eusebius of Caesarea, 18, and Origen of Alexandria. Early Christianity became the established church of the Ethiopian Axumite kingdom under King Izana and his brother King Sezana in the 4th century when priesthood and the sacraments were brought for the first time through a Syrian Greek named Fermentius, known by the local population in Ethiopia as Salama, Kisate Burhan, Father of Peace, Revealer of Light. As a youth, Fermentius had been shipwrecked with his brother Adesius on the Eritrean coast. The brothers managed to be brought to the royal court, where they rose to positions of influence and baptized Emperor Izana. Fermentius is also believed to have established the first monastery in Ethiopia, named Daba Salama after him. In 2016, scientists excavated a 4th century AD basilica, radiocarbon dated, in northeastern Ethiopia at a site called Beta Samani. This is the earliest known physical evidence of a church in sub-Saharan Africa. The Ethiopian Orthodox Church was founded on a synodal level in 325 AD. The first bishop of the church was Fermentius. A Syrian by birth brought up in Ethiopia in the palace of Aksum. He went to Alexandria and returned after being consecrated as bishop by Saint Athanasius. The faithful in Ethiopia call him Abba Salama Kasait Baran, father of peace and revealer of light. Nine saints from the Middle East and Asia Minor migrated to Ethiopia 150 years later. They introduced monastic life, translated many religious books from Aramaic and Hebrew into the Jiz language, and expounded the one person, one nature doctrine of Saint Cyril. Since the schism of 451, the Ethiopian Orthodox Tuahedo Church shares the same faith with the Coptic, Syrian and Armenian Orthodox Churches and the Syrian Orthodox Church of India. Tuahedo is a word that reflects the Ethiopian understanding of one nature. Tuahedo is a Giz word meaning united as one. 
This word refers to the Oriental Orthodox belief in the one perfectly unified nature of Christ. A complete union of the divine and human natures into one nature is self-evident in order to accomplish the divine salvation of mankind, as opposed to the two natures of Christ belief commonly held by the Latin and Eastern Catholic, Eastern Orthodox, Anglican, Lutheran, and most other Protestant churches. The Oriental Orthodox churches adhere to a miaphysitic Christological view followed by Cyril of Alexandria, the leading protagonist in the Christological debates of the 4th and 5th centuries, who advocated Mia Physis to Theu Logus Sisarchamin, or 1, Mia, nature of the Word of God incarnate, and a hypostatic union. The distinction of this stance was that the incarnate Christ has one nature, but that one nature is of the two natures, divine and human, and retains all the characteristics of both after the union, the Oriental Orthodox churches are known as non-Chalcedonian, and, sometimes by outsiders as a monophysite, meaning one single nature, in allusion to Jesus Christ. However, these churches themselves describe their Christology as miaphysite, meaning one united nature, in reference to Jesus, the Greek equivalent of Tuahedo. The Ethiopian Orthodox Tuahedo Church is the largest of the Oriental Orthodox Churches. One of the few Christian churches in Sub-Saharan Africa originating before European colonization of the continent. It has over 70 million adherents in Ethiopia. It is a founding member of the World Council of Churches, the church has suffered greatly from various religious persecutions down the centuries. The reign of Queen Yodid in the 9th century lasted for 40 years and caused great damage to the life of the church. The invasion of Muhammad the left-handed in the 16th century was even more destructive. Again during the 17th century, the church suffered persecution at the hands of the Jesuit Alfonso Mendez and his followers. During the fierce five-year struggle against the invasion of Mussolini from 1935 to 1940, several bishops, many priests and thousands of faithful lost their lives. More than 2,000 churches were destroyed and numerous church manuscripts taken away, since 1950 the Ethiopian Orthodox Church has been autocephalous. The church has 81 canonical books and 14 anaphoras. The language of the divine service is Guizi, the ancient language of Ethiopia. Today, however, portions of the liturgy are also rendered in Amharic. There are seven official fasting periods, one, all Wednesdays and Fridays, except during the 50 days after Easter, two, the Lenten fast, three, the Nenve fast, four, the vigils or Gahad of Christmas and Epiphany, five, the fast of the Apostles, six, the fast of the Prophets, seven, the fast of the Assumption. The supreme authority in matters of church administration and justice, legislative, administrative and judicial, belongs to the Holy Synod which meets twice a year, under the chairmanship of His Holiness the Patriarch. The diocesan archbishop is the chairman of the diocesan parish council. The national parish council meets once a year in the Patriarchate, also under the chairmanship of the Patriarch. The church has two kinds of clergy, the regular priests, who administer the sacraments, and the learned lay clerks, who are entrusted with the chant of the church offices and teaching in the schools. There are six clergy training centers and one theological seminary. The current administrative structure has been most conducive for both the clergy and the laity to meet the vital needs of the whole human being and to work together for the development of the church, both spiritually and socially, through the respective parish councils. The Sunday school program unit is very active, the Ethiopian Orthodox Church exists in the Sudan and Djibouti, in Jerusalem, Europe and North and South America. Eight of its bishops serve the church outside Ethiopia, Middle Ages, union with the Coptic Orthodox Church of Alexandria continued after the Arab conquest of Egypt. Abu Salah records in the 12th century that the Patriarch always sent letters twice a year to the kings of Abyssinia, Ethiopia, and Nubia until Al-Hakim stopped the practice. Cyril, 67th Patriarch, sent Severus as bishop, with orders to put down polygamy and to enforce the observance of canonical consecration for all churches. These examples show the close relations of the two churches throughout the Middle Ages. In 1439, in the reign of Zara Yaqub, 
a religious discussion between Georgius and a French visitor led to the dispatch of an embassy from Ethiopia to the Vatican, Jesuit interim, the period of Jesuit influence, which broke the connection with Egypt, began a new chapter in church history. The initiative in Roman Catholic missions to Ethiopia was taken not by Rome, but by Portugal, in the course of a conflict with the Muslim Ottoman Empire and the Sultanate of Adal for the command of the trade route to India via the Red Sea, in 1507 Matthias, or Matthew, an Armenian, had been sent as an Ethiopian envoy to Portugal. In 1520 an embassy under Dom Rodrigo de Lima landed in Ethiopia. An interesting account of the Portuguese mission, which lasted for several years, was written by Francisco Alvarez, its chaplain, later, Ignatius Loyola wished to take up the task of conversion, but was forbidden to do so. Instead, the Pope sent out João Nunes Barreto as Patriarch of the East Indies, with André de Oviedo as Bishop, and from Goa envoys went to Ethiopia, followed by Oviedo himself, to secure the king's adherence to Rome. After repeated failure some measure of success was achieved under Emperor Susenio's eye. But not until 1624 did the emperor make a formal submission to the pope. Susenio's made Roman Catholicism the official state religion but was met with heavy resistance by his subjects and by the authorities of the Ethiopian Orthodox Church, and eventually had to abdicate in 1632 in favor of his son, Phasilides, who promptly restored Ethiopian Orthodox Christianity as the state religion. He then in 1633 expelled the Jesuits, and in 1665 Phasilides ordered that all Jesuit books, the books of the Franks, be burned. Recent history, in more modern times, the Ethiopian church has experienced a series of developments. The 19th century witnessed the publication of an Amharic translation of the Bible. Largely the work of Abu Rumi over ten years in Cairo, this version, with some changes, held sway until Emperor Haile Selassie ordered a new translation which appeared in 1960-1. Haile Selassie also played a prominent role in further reforms of the church, which included encouraging the distribution of Abu Rumi's translation throughout Ethiopia. As well as his promotion of improved education of clergy, a significant step in the emperor's effort being the founding of the Theological College of the Holy Trinity Church in December 1944. A third development came after Haile Selassie's restoration to Ethiopia, when he issued, on November 30, Decree No. 2 of 1942, a new law reforming the church. The primary objectives of this decree were to put the finances of the church in order, to create a central fund for its activities, and to set forth requirements for the appointment of clergy, which had been fairly lax until then. The Coptic and Ethiopian churches reached an agreement on July 13, 1948, that led to autocephaly for the Ethiopian church. Five bishops were immediately consecrated by the Coptic Pope of Alexandria and Patriarch of All Africa, empowered to elect a new patriarch for their church. And the successor to Corellos for would have the power to consecrate new bishops. This promotion was completed when Coptic Orthodox Pope Joseph II consecrated an Ethiopian-born Archbishop, Abuna Basilios, January 14, 1951. Then in 1959, Pope Cyril VI of Alexandria crowned Basilios as the first Patriarch of Ethiopia, Abun Basilios died in 1970, and was succeeded that year by Abun Tuafilos. With the fall of Emperor Haile Selassie in 1974, the Ethiopian Orthodox Tuahedo Church was disestablished as the state church. The new Marxist government began nationalizing property, including land, owned by the church. Abun Tuafilos was arrested in 1976 by the Marxist Derg military junta, and secretly executed in 1979. The government ordered the church to elect a new patriarch, and Abun Takla Haymanot was enthroned. The Coptic Orthodox Church refused to recognize the election and enthronement of Abun Tekul Haymanot on the grounds that the Synod of the Ethiopian Church had not removed Abun Tuafilos and that the government had not publicly acknowledged his death. And he was thus still the legitimate patriarch of Ethiopia. Formal relations between the two churches were halted, although they remained in communion with each other.
Abun Tekol Hamanat proved to be much less accommodating to the Derg regime than it had expected, and so when the Patriarch died in 1988, a new Patriarch with closer ties to the regime was sought. The Archbishop of Gondar, a member of the Derg era Ethiopian parliament, was elected and enthroned as Abuna Mercorios. Following the fall of the Derg regime in 1991, and the coming to power of the EPRDF government, Mercorios abdicated under public and governmental pressure. The church then elected a new patriarch. Paulos, who was recognized by the Coptic Orthodox Pope of Alexandria. The former Mercorios then fled abroad, and announced from exile that his abdication had been made under duress and thus he was still the legitimate patriarch of Ethiopia. Several bishops also went into exile and formed a breakaway alternate synod. The Eritrean Orthodox Tuahedo Church granted autocephaly from the Ethiopian Orthodox Church on September 28, 1993 following ratification by Coptic Church Patriarch Shenouda III. The schism has met opposition from dissent that saw it as a disintegration of Ethiopia's spiritual heritage, as of 2005, there are many Ethiopian Orthodox churches located throughout the United States and other countries to which Ethiopians have migrated. On February 28, 2013, a college of electors assembled in Addis Ababa and elected Matthias to be the sixth patriarch of the Ethiopian Orthodox Church. On July 25, 2018, delegates from the Patriarchate in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia and those in the United States, declared reunification in Washington, D.C. with the assistance of Ethiopia's Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed. Declaring the end of a 26-year-old schism, the Church announced that it acknowledges two patriarchs, Abun Mercorios, fourth patriarch of Ethiopia and Abun Matthias I. Sixth Patriarch and Catholicos of Ethiopia, Archbishop of Aksum and Echage of the See of St. Takal Hamanot. After Prime Minister Abi came to power, many Christians were killed and many churches were burned. The church blamed the government and its leader for all this damage. Recently, a tragedy happened in the Ethiopian Orthodox Tuado Church. Three bishops who were members of the Holy Synod appointed other bishops without due process saying that they have established our own synod due to racial divisions. And the church expelled these people. Two of those who were appointed were pardoned and rejoined the church. The church believes that the government has a hand in this, she blamed the government. In response, the government has so far killed more than 40 Christians and arrested bishops, so the church has shown its anger and the government decided to talk. Now the government and the church are in dialogue. Victory for the Ethiopian Orthodox Tuado Church